So most of our thoughts and feelings come from our past experiences. They come from our memories. In fact, your brain is organized to reflect everything you know in your life. Your brain is a record of all the things you've learned and experienced to date. It's an artifact. And when you have an experience, when you're in the midst of an experience, all of your five senses plug you into the external environment. And as your brain is processing all of this vital sensory data, all of that information rushes back to the brain. And when it reaches the brain, it causes jungles of neurons to organize themselves into networks, to string into patterns, to reflect their interaction with their external environment. The moment those neurons organize into uh, patterns, the brain makes a chemical, and that chemical is called a feeling or an emotion. And so experiences tend to create more long-term memories because it patterns or stamps or embosses networks of neurons into very specific patterns. And then the emotional quotient helps us to remember the event. So we learn something new intellectually. We also cause networks of neurons to form. I mean, the Nobel Prize laureate Kandel in the year 2000 found that when people learn just one bit of information, they doubled the number of connections in their brain from 1,300 connections to 2,600 connections. So if they didn't review that information or repeat it, the connections pruned apart. So we know then that learning semantic information begins to organize circuitry in the brain and experiences enrich the brain. The end product of experience, of course, is the emotion and it causes us to feel certain ways. You can, you can remember where you were on 9-11. You can tell me who you were with, what time of day it was, what you were doing, because whatever you were seeing in that moment or hearing in that moment changed how you were feeling. And the moment you felt altered or you felt differently, significantly, your brain perked up and you paid attention to whatever caused that. And that event in and of itself is called a memory. So then most of our thoughts and feelings tend to be within the neural circuitry of the past and the emotions of the past chemically. So if you take a thought, thoughts are the language of the brain and feelings are the language of the body. And how you think and how you feel creates a state of being. So if you combine a thought and a feeling, a thought and a feeling, a thought and a feeling, and you have a series of good thoughts that are connected to a series of good feelings, that cycle of thinking and feeling creates what's called an attitude. If you have a series of negative thoughts that are connected to some pretty bad feelings, you'll say I have a pretty bad attitude today. So if how you think and how you feel creates a state of being, then attitudes are just shortened states of being. You can feel good in the morning, you can feel bad in the afternoon. If you take an attitude, an attitude, an attitude, and you begin to string attitudes together, when you combine an attitude, an attitude, an attitude, you start to form what's called beliefs. Now, a belief is just a thought you keep thinking over and over again until you hardwire it in your brain. And because beliefs are based on past experiences, then the very boundaries of our beliefs are how we feel. And so when our beliefs get challenged, it typically doesn't feel right. I know from the research that we've done that the redundancy of thinking and feeling and feeling and thinking over time, for example, a person has an insecure thought, then they feel insecure. The moment they feel insecure, they think more insecure thoughts. They fire and wire more circuits in their brain to feel more chemicals of insecurity. And then once they're feeling insecure, they think more insecure thoughts and they do this for over and over again. The redundancy and the repetition of that cycle over time conditions the body to subconsciously become the mind. Once the body becomes the mind, that's called a habit. Turns out that 95% of who we are by the time we're 35 years old are a set of habituations, unconscious thoughts, unconscious behaviors, unconscious emotional reactions that function like a subconscious computer program. So back to beliefs. An attitude and attitude and attitude are shortened states of being. And you combine them together then then a belief then, the cycle of thinking and feeling over time, creates a subconscious state of being. So all beliefs 
our subconscious states of being. We have beliefs about God, about spirituality, about health, about relationships, about love. And all of those are based on our past experiences, but the majority of those beliefs we don't even know that we believe them because we think they're true because they're not functioning primarily in the conscious mind so